A few days ago, I went to a thrift store and I came back with this delightfully basic 1990s machine. This is a Packard Bell Excel 831 CDT, a pretty basic machine from around 1995-1996. This machine came with a 100MHz Intel Pentium CPU, 8MB of RAM, a 1GB hard drive, and 1 megabyte of video memory. The graphics chipset is actually a Cirrus Logic CLGD5434, which actually does have upgradable VRAM. You can see the unpopulated sockets right next to it. This video went off the rails very quickly. I found this machine at a thrift store for 8 bucks, and I was originally going to take it home, maybe restore it, play some games on it, but those plans very quickly faded once I realized what was on this when I got it. Really quickly before the video starts, I would like to announce that I launched a Patreon. I have tiers for everybody, so if you'd like to support the channel and make it possible for me to do even more cool videos, definitely consider becoming a member on the Patreon. Anyway, back to the video. Like I said before, this is a pretty average machine from the mid-1990s, both in terms of specs and the I.O., which isn't really much of anything special. Here at the back you have your serial port, parallel printer port, PS2 ports for connecting a keyboard and mouse, standard VGA, audio jacks with a 15-pin game port for connecting a joystick, and your pretty average for the time 14.4 BPS dial-up modem. There was probably something else in this machine at some point, because there's two empty brackets right at the back, but that's it. There's no USB or anything like that. This machine predates USB pretty much by a year. When I took this thing home, I figured I need to do some restoration on it, because that extremely yellowed optical drive that's in there definitely is not original, and for sure needs to be replaced. Also, it appears that one of the trim pieces fell off of this machine, and I don't have it. So if anybody has an extra trim piece for this kind of Packard Bell case, let me know. So I decided to take a look inside, and when I got inside, I immediately noticed that the RAM looks to be upgraded. So that got me curious if anything else was different about this machine, so I went ahead and just plugged it in and turned it on. 32 megs of RAM, 100 megahertz CPU, our hard drive might not be showing up. Oh, there we go. That's our hard drive. That took really long for some reason. What? What? I was not expect- That's the last thing I was expecting to be on here. Okay, well, let's just boot it. What kernel version is this? That hard drive makes some pretty cool sounds. Wow. Kernel 2.4.4. Wow! You gotta admit, that's pretty cool. But let's take our focus back to the hardware side, because there's definitely a bunch of things that need to be changed. Like this optical drive, which is really starting to get on my nerves. And also, when the computer was on, I hit the eject button and it didn't eject, so I think a belt might be broken in this thing anyway. And I have the perfect thing to replace this drive with. I've had this new old stock CD-ROM drive forever, and I've been waiting for the perfect opportunity to actually use it. This one's a slight bit faster, this one's a 48 speed, but this also can write discs. So I went ahead and threw that in there. In fact, while we're here, might as well do an unboxing. Quality assurance. I don't want to ruin the seal here. There we go. All right, V cable, software, some more software, or is this just a blank CD? We have our CD audio interface cable, manuals, and of course, the brand new optical drive. See, look at that. This thing is literally brand new. It's never been touched. Look at that. This will be a perfect addition to that new machine. I also started poking around inside a little bit, just to see what other hardware is in there. Mainly trying to figure out what this sound card is, because I've never seen this chipset before. But look at that, this machine looks way better with that new optical drive in it. So then I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole. I tried to upgrade the hard drive, which I was literally stuck on for multiple days, because this machine seems to be very particular on what drives I can put in the system. I tried a whole bunch of stuff to see if I can get a hard drive bigger than one gigabyte working in this machine. And I really tried everything. I tried new cards, I tried new cables, I tried multiple different hard drives. No luck at all. And there isn't really much of any information on the motherboard or this computer in general on the internet. I could really only find general information about it, but nothing about the motherboard or the BIOS or anything about this machine. So after multiple days of trying but failing, I just left the original 1GB drive in there. And I also went ahead and stole the network card from my Windows 95 machine and put it in here. Just because I figured I'd play around with some networking on this thing. Especially because I don't even use this card in my 95 machine. The network card I threw in there was a Digital Etherworks Turbo DE435. Honestly, pretty cool card. Also, this is how my room looked after I was troubleshooting computers for three days. So after giving up on that, I brought my attention back to the looks of the machine. Because it still looked uh, kind of grimy, I wanted to clean it up a little bit. So I just grabbed a paper towel, got some isopropyl alcohol, and just went to town. And it cleaned up pretty nicely, except for the label at the bottom, which 
I was kind of conflicted on whether to remove or not because there's some residue on it that doesn't look all that pretty. So I kind of just left it on there, but I should probably take it off. But I kind of don't want to because it's kind of rare to see stickers like this last on a machine this old. And I just think it's kind of cool. But so far, this thing looks pretty much restored and it still posts. So now onto software. And I really like the idea of having a 90s Linux PC in my life. So I'm going to do just that. I figured I would go ahead and reinstall what was already on here when I got it. So I went ahead and downloaded and burned a copy of SUSE Linux 7.0 and begun installing. I have uh, my installation media for SUSE Linux 7.0. I'm going to be using the SUSE Linux 6.3 boot disk, mainly because I couldn't find one that was for 7.0 that actually worked. So hopefully it just works. All right, there's the boot disk. Also, uh, my apologies for the uh, constant flickering on the screen. It's just uh, refresh rate's going all over the place, and I can't really change that easily on my camera because I'm using a mobile phone. So you're gonna have to bear with me for a little bit. Okay, I guess to start installation. There we go. And we want to start installation from CD-ROM. There we go. There's that seat. What? 55 CC kilobyte. That's more than I have RAM. I only have 32 megs of RAM. It's just frozen. Well, shit, it's just frozen. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Maybe figure something else out. So I'm on my personal Windows 2000 machine yet again. I actually use this thing a lot. I should really clean up the desktop. Anyway, I'm gonna try SUSE 6.3 instead because I think this might actually work better. I can't really seem to find any mention of minimum system requirements online, but I'm just gonna assume that lower number means lower system requirements. So yeah, I'm gonna copy this stuff off my NAS and I'm gonna burn the CDs and we can go. Okay, so I only burnt disc one just because I wanna see if it'll actually boot this time. Okay, hopefully this works. Start installation from CD-ROM. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. That's gonna work. There we go. Install Linux from scratch. We're gonna go, uh, yeah. All right, there's already a swap partition on this drive, so I might as well just use it. Why not? Format these both. Let's see, this should probably be our boot partition. And we'll make this one, and I'll make that one our root partition, yeah? We'll do it like that. Okay, so what do we want? You need it. All right, we'll get, we're will get grabbing the base Linux system. Oh, wow. Okay. Whole bunch of, whole bunch of stuff that we can look for here. So, of course, base system. Uh, we can actually choose what base packages that we want. Okay, we have Vim. That's cool. That all seems fine. Window manager and desktop. We got Window Maker. I want that. We got some doc apps, sure. We we don't want FVWM, I kinda just don't care. What I do want though, yes, after step, give me that amazing CTWM. Uh, sure, let's get uh, a CDE lookalike. All I want here, uh, let's see, source pack. Oh. So when a lot of people look at old Linux, they're like, wow, it's so bloated because it comes on like, you know, six CDs and you're well, uh, really, what it is, in the 90s, early 2000s, internet wasn't really that fast for everyone, so downloading packages kind of sucked. So usually, when you buy a Linux distribution, you'd, you'd buy like a big box copy or like something in a magazine to come in for free, and it would just come with a bunch of software packages that you can freely install on your system. If you had internet, you'd probably receive updates via the internet, or you could just purchase update CDs. Ooh, amateur radio. Ooh. On Linux, CLI GUI interface for the QRZ? Dude, this is uh, extremely up my alley. I'm gonna have to look at some of this stuff later. There's a lot of games here, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to install any of that stuff. There's some security related stuff. Oh, okay, like stuff like Argos and FCT and that kind of stuff. Tripwire, yeah. I don't really need any of that. Let's just go start installation. Okay, we're getting After Step, Window Maker, some other stuff. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that stuff installed. That looks cool. Okay, while this is going, I'm going to switch back to my Windows 2000 machine and quickly burn disk 2. Hello. Okay. So I didn't check before, but I don't know if it asks what bootloader you want, if there's different options. But I'm pretty sure this comes with Lilo as default, which, I mean, it's fine. They don't have a problem with Lilo, but I want to see what the options are. Hold on a second. It just installed BitchX. What is BitchX? 
So after a really long cycle of burning and swapping CDs, I finally got Linux installed. Alright. Select kernel. Sure, we go with this one. Yes. Okay, F4, new config. Uh, config name. Boot Linux. Yeah, that should work. I don't really know what all I have to do here, but we'll just see if that works. Yeah, no graphical login. We don't need a graphical login where we're going. Free system has now been installed. Started in order to commit the... Yeah. Let's go. New password. What is an example user? I don't know. I have a modem. Well, I do have a modem. Do you want to send your mouse? Yes. Okay, we have mouse. No graphical login is fine. I don't want a graphical login. You know, I wonder if there's a way to get LY working on here. I would definitely use LY on here. Well, let's just, uh, let's just log in as my user I just made. Okay. Oh, oh man, I don't know how to configure this. I don't know how to get the X server set up. Hold on a second. Okay, she needs to run SAX and that will set up my uh, X server configuration. Yeah, again, sorry about the flickering screen. It's at 48 Hertz and uh, I just can't set my phone's refresh rate to that. So, okay, I need to change the monitor's refresh rate. This is just terrible. Is my monitor in here? View Sonic 17GS, there we go. Okay, I guess only 640 by 480 it'll do. You good? Can you please just do 60? 60 hertz, please. Uh, I didn't change save configuration. Maybe start X. Oh, uh, okay, let's open up Saks again. I'm looking at an old guide on how to install SUSE on a Toshiba 300CT. It's a very old website, but I'm looking at the X server configuration stuff there because I've never done this before. So I'm just kind of trying to follow that. Seeing if whatever I do could just apply to this and it'll just work. Do you want to use it? No, not really. That's a bad configuration. So it's telling me to just hit auto detected and then go to expert and then select whatever graphics chip that you have. So chipsets, Oh boy, look at all this stuff. I have it written down here. I have the Cirrus Logic CL GD5434-J-QC-F. Does it, is that on here? Oh, they have it. Now we continue to the monitor configuration. Monitor, I have ViewSonic 17GS. Yes, I really want, can you just give me 60 Hertz please? Let's do 1024 by 768 with 24 bit color. That sounds like that'll work. Uh, fatal server error, no valid modes found. It took me a really long time to get the X server set up. I couldn't even really adjust it properly. It was still at 57 Hertz. So I have this bar going down the screen. At least it's not flashing. Also, for those who are unfamiliar with CRTs, I do not see that in real life. The reason why I want to get the monitor to 60 Hertz is because I'm recording in 60 FPS. And so if the FPS on the camera matches the refresh of the CRT, there's no annoying flashing or no annoying bars going on the screen. It should be all smooth. But I wasn't able to change it to 60 Hertz. And I tried putting in the refresh rate manually, but then it just gave me an X server error saying there was no valid modes found. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I don't know, I've never done this before. But I was finally able to make it to the desktop, though I got really bored very quickly. Because this machine is slow. The joys of Linux on a 100 megahertz Pentium with a really old, slow hard drive. Yeah, that's really slow. It's slow in the way where it's actually kind of enjoyable. Now, uh, I do have a network card in there, although it's not being detected, and I'm not really sure why. It seems to be only detecting the dial-up card that's in there. Let's open Netscape here. Yeah, that took literally forever just to pull up the license agreement. Okay, well, uh, there we go. Uh, let's actually go into After Step. 
Oh, okay. I don't know why that popped up. Oh yeah, check that out. That's amazing. Honestly, uh, I'd rather use this on this computer because it's not really that demanding. Tools, Netscape. How long does it take for Netscape to open on this? Oh, not too long. Okay. That's a lot better than it was on KDE, that's for sure. Yeah, this system is a snoozer. It's not the best when it comes to speed. But you know what? I'm actually messing with it. I, I really like this, actually. Okay, so it's been about a week now, and I've been having a lot of fun playing with this thing. Although, still, no matter how hard I try, I cannot change the refresh rate to do anything that is not this. Uh, it's just kind of annoying, and it doesn't look very good, but, you know, whatever. If I try to go past what's set up right now, it just crashes, and it doesn't want to work. And I've been having a couple other issues with this install, so I'm just kind of pissed. So I had something nice come in the mail, and that was a box copy of Red Hat 5.2. Now, this is a bit of an older Linux distribution, and I figured this would probably fit way better. Actually, you can see that the minimum requirements on this side of the box are way lower than what we're running on here, which is a SUSE 6.3. Like, check this out. This is pretty complete inside. Look at that. It even still has the giant uh, redhat.com sticker, and it has the little case badge that goes with it uh, when you put Red Hat on your computer, which um, I was thinking about using when I installed Red Hat on here, but I kind of want to keep the sticker on there. It's been there for so long. Now, this is our boot diskette and our install CDs, which are three CDs. And uh, the rest is the uh, installation guide, which I have a feeling I'm definitely going to need to look at it, so I'll definitely be reading it. But uh, yeah, let's give this thing a shot and let's install this instead. So I went ahead and installed Red Hat on the machine, which I actually ended up installing twice, because the first time I messed up the partitions and the system wouldn't boot. But after reinstalling it again, it all worked fine. And this was a really good idea, because the system is a lot faster and a lot more fun to play with. Okay, so it should boot directly into FEWM95. That's what I believe is the default for this. But uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, we should change the host name. All right, that'll do. Okay, let's see. What other window managers do we have? We have, uh, okay, this is the one we're on right now, FEWM95. We have uh, less tiff WM. I don't know what that is. After step and window maker. I want to see window maker. So uh, I actually use window maker on my main machine. So this is really cool to see. We have our classic calendar doc app as well, our time and calendar, which the time is not right. But yeah, this is really cool. So what is this? So what is this? This is just like a quick access panel or something. Okay, yeah, this is just like, a, well, there's how I changed the time. Run level editor, oh my goodness. So this uses sysv for managing services, that's interesting. Let me just switch over to after step actually. Oh, that is amazing. Okay, here we go. We have XOS view here. I'll just put that over there. What else we got for games? What are video games? X Bill. Is that Bill? Is that supposed to be Bill Gates? Oh my God, that is crazy. What the hell? What am I supposed to do? Heard. If you know, you know. It's actively making fun of Windows 9X in this game. Wonder if X Bill's on the R. I want to install this on my main system. That X Snow. Yes! We love X Snow here. Okay, I'm gonna exit really quick because I want to make a user account so I'm not just using the root user. What should make account name user? I'll just do my name. And let's add a password to said user. So for that. Now let's log into our new user now. There we go. Okay, there we go. It brings us into after step. So far, I've been playing around with this thing for about a week, and I've been having a lot of fun with old Linux. Who knew Linux from the 1990s was so much fun to play with? Anyway, thank you for watching. Hit like if you liked it. If you really liked this video, consider supporting me over on Patreon. Dislike if you hate old Linux or old Linux on old computers, or if you just hate me. I have plenty of more interesting videos coming up soon, so definitely stay tuned. Compatible like display mode available and I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. Okay. No, thank you, that was very polite.